What's going on HPP fam? Picking up the camera late this week. But let me show you what we got kicking around the shop. Our build motor Hellcat is almost complete. The reason why it's not done is we had an issue with the disconnect on the clutch line and the actual piece is broken now from us trying to put it back together. So we got a new line. We'll be putting that on the car and getting that one wrapped up. Uh, Alfonso's vet that we are in the process of twin turboing is coming right along, but we've ran into a, a lot of <clears throat> small issues. The person that he bought the kit from, it's used, and it's missing a ton of little stuff. The hard parts and all the big stuff is there, but a bunch of the little stuff like fittings, uh, hardware, turbocharger drain lines, just stuff like that was not included for some reason. Like, what are, what are you going to do with that stuff? Should have just gave it to him. That's here nor there. So we are test fitting and currently working through those issues. <clears throat> and then we also have our Louisiana car, which <clears throat> at this point kind of should already be gone by now too. But unfortunately we ran into little issues and this is just kind of par for the course when it comes to this, this type of stuff. You know, motor's in, torque storm is back on, car runs, it was on the dyno. We we're making pretty decent power, but running out of fuel. So we got an upgraded fuel pump for it installed that then we started running into new issues wiring so looking through the harness you can we've seen quite a few areas where the harness has been cut and put back together which is not good but unfortunately there's nothing we can do about it so we've been going through and fixing those things now all of a sudden we don't have oil pressure obviously we checked it with a mechanical gauge we do have oil pressure but there is a problem with the wiring for the oil pressure sensor so that's what we're going to dive into next figure out what's going on with that get it repaired and go from there. Yes, we already replaced the sensor, so it is a wiring issue. Um, aside from that, it's about what the most important stuff that we have going on right now. We did have a vehicle drop off from the dealership uh, out of Austin, and that's that 2011 Ram 1500 right there with the 5.7 liter Hemi. Uh, interesting. Some people just don't bother troubleshooting or don't care. So that vehicle, uh, we had a call. Hey, we're out of Austin. This vehicle won't pass emissions. It's got check engine lights. Can you help us? Sure thing, drop it off. So they drop it off, plug in the scanner, check the codes out. Notice the vehicle is idling at operating temperature at 900 RPM. Pop the hood, look, bone stock. I can tell the cats are not the factory cats, but it's catted. Uh, every coal pack is missing one bolt. The intake on it that is not a factory intake, it looks like some Spectre garbage that somebody put together from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. <sighs> so I'm like, eh, let me dig in the CCU. Pull the file out, and lo and behold, this was a vehicle that had a bunch of aftermarket parts on it that somebody had put back to stock and traded in at the dealership. One of the things that it had was a camshaft. It no longer has a camshaft in it. So, went through and for the most part, put a factory calibration back in the truck, fired it up, runs like a charm, idles at 650, drives great, and now I'm just driving it enough to get all of the emissions things to clear and pass, like your, your O2s, your O2 heaters, your EGR, so on and so forth, misfire monitors, spark, you guys know the drill. So, once we get all those to clear, I give them a call, tell them they can come pick their truck up. The last mechanic said it had bad gas. Drain it, put new gas, and drive it, and it'll be just fine. So uh, watch out for those mechanics. <laughs> Anyways, let's dive into some work. So I ended up getting the oil pressure switch fixed. Um, the actual signal wire from the ECU had a break in it. So I repaired the wiring, and I don't know if it's fixed. I haven't started the car, but I know it's fixed because of the testing that I've done. That's here and over there. Something else I want to address. If you look at that, that looks just awful. Someone decided that they were just gonna put the gasket in no thermostat. I'm not really sure why. Uh, and honestly, when we had this motor apart, I don't know why we didn't pull that off because you can see it kind of looks ugly around the edge there. But caught it now while we were doing some other work, I noticed that that looked ugly. So I wanted to do some deep diving and see why. And then I found out why. Don't do that. Put a thermostat in it. Do a little research. There's no reason for you to run a vehicle without a thermostat. It does not allow the coolant system to work and pressurize properly. 
So, bad, don't do that. So, fortunately, we're in the parts room. We have a brand new thermostat. So, we'll be slapping that Johnny in there after I get all that nasty RTV cleaned up because there is not supposed to be any on there. Side note, our Hellcat is coming right along. Got our clutch line installed and John's at lunch right now, but he's got one more radiator hose to put on, back it down, put oil in it, put the intake back on, and this Hellcat's ready to fire up with its new BES race engine built motor. So, exciting. Should hear it fire up this afternoon. And uh, we'll put this thing on the dyno and check it over. Move over, baby. First start, Hellcat is all wrapped up. Check that out guys, first start. I want to point out, you see all that smoke? Most of the people you see online, they talk, oh first start, you don't see it like that. It's because they be bullshitting, they started it beforehand, and then they're telling you it's a first start. Not around here, this is the real deal, holy field. Got oil pressure. Looking good. No check-ins in life. So guys, as you can see, our Hellcat is all wrapped up. Nice and cleaned up. Turning like a kid. We also installed a steering wheel. Check that out sick with the little lights on it shows your mile an hour and your rpm and flashy lights very nice very nice like it like it but this joker is all wrapped up got it cleaned up and ready to go back to the customer on to the next one So as you guys just watched, our car from Louisiana uh, make, some, make a pull on the dyno, and it's doing well. Got all of our problems resolved, got oil pressure, running on all eight, um, and making good power. Only complaint, it's not making enough power, and that's just due to it's only making four pounds of boost. So I'm going to talk with the customer and see what he wants to do. Um, I would like it to be closer to 600, 620 wheel, and it's at 520 right now. But four pounds of boost, kind of makes sense. Most of your standard base kits for like pro chargers and stuff are six, six and a half pounds of boost by redline. So we're about two, two and a half pounds of boost light, which 25 to 30 pounds of, or horsepower per pound of boost, that would put us really close to that 600 mark if not over but <clears throat> for right now that one's all wrapped up yesterday John started on a new project uh, and it is getting a Texas speed camshaft I believe a stage 2 yeah. truck cam so as you can see John has started let me shed some light on this situation wrong way 
Uh, there it is. <clears throat> As you can see, John has started tearing this thing down, and um, we just found it best to each their own. Just gank the motor out of these things, do all the work, drop it back in. Um, so we are at that point where we're going to pop two motor mounts and one more bolt off the transmission and slide this motor out so we can do our cam install. And just like that, our motor is out of our Silverado. Like I said, a lot of shops maybe don't do this, but we like to pull them all the way out. This makes life so much easier working on them. Especially with the newer LT stuff, you know, we've got the plug down here for the oil pan, that, or for the front cover to unplug from the oil pump. Uh, so that way, uh, it makes getting that much easier than trying to mess with that in the truck. And on top of that, um, you know, we have removing the oil pump on these. Hello? Uh, you know, got to put the guides on the oil pump. It just makes everything easier with them out. So we're going to go ahead and keep stripping this thing. Get our heads off, get our valve springs put on and uh, get our camshaft tour out of this thing so we can get it back in the truck. So guys, without further ado, that's going to end this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.